Hello, Accelerated Math 6-7 students. We are working in Module 4, and your um, video is on Lesson 24. And my number, or my writing is out of order, so I'm trying to give you the C only the next one. The next one that we're working on um, is from equations to inequality. That's the name of the lesson for today. So from equations to inequality. So getting that written down in your comp book and then turn to the next available page. Um, and then here are our notes on the iPad. So from equations to inequality. Um, so I kind of need you to pay attention to the fact in this class or this note for this class um, that this is kind of just a discussion point today. Um, and you need to be able to understand why sometimes you need to use an inequality versus why sometimes you need an equal sign. So our goal, today we will see how to turn an equation into an inequality by changing the requirements of the solution. So the question I want you to think about in this lesson is, has there ever been a time in math when a scenario could have more than one answer? And for me, there's been that occasion a lot. And the time that comes to mind for me is when you're talking about collecting test scores. So everyone in the class takes the same test. And we have to determine with our grading scale that if you get 90 or above, it, it's an A. If you get an 80 or an 80 through an 89, it's a B. Um, a 70 to 79, it's a C. Um, a 60 to a 69 is a D, and then anything below a 60 is an F. And so for me, a time in math when we would need to have more than one answer would be when we are talking about all of the different possible scores that kids get on tests. Because you could have a 99, and you could have a 92, and it would still be an A. Okay? And so there's many times when you can have more than one answer to have the answer come out correct. And that's what we're going to talk about in this lesson today. All right, so something I want you to check out. In a math class, can more than one student get an A on the test? I kind of already answered that question for you. There are 26 students in the class. The number of Ds and Fs was exactly the same. 12 students earned a B. Half of the, stu half of the students who earned a B earned a C and one student got a D. The rest get an A on the test. How many students got an A in the test? Your job is to write an equation to figure out the number of students who earned an A, and then you're supposed to use the truth diagram to find the solution. So we're, we've been working with these kind of problems all week, so this shouldn't be too hard for you to do. So let's go ahead and set up what we're supposed to do. It says you're supposed to write an equation and then figure out the students who got an A. So let's go back to our um, paragraph because we need to know what we know. All right, so I'm going to make a table because I have three fallen in love with tables because that's a really good way to help me organize my thoughts. So I'm going to put on my table all of the kids that got an A, all of the kids who got a B, all of the kids who got a C, all of the kids who got a D, and all of the kids who got an F. And we're going to go back and make this together. Oh, and there's a total column. Okay, so it says there are 26 students in the class. So I know my total has to equal 26. It says the number of Ds and Fs was exactly the same. So Ds are equal to Fs. Okay. And then it says 12 students earned a B. So I know I can go to my B column, and I'll show it to you in just a second, but I want to write it down so I can use the iPad. So 12 students earned a B. And then it says half of the numbers of students who earned a B earned a C. So in the C column, I'm going to put half of B, right? And then it says one student got a D, so I know there's one in the B column. Well, if one student got a D, then I also know that one student got an F because B and F equal each other. And then we're supposed to figure out A. So I'm putting an X in there. Okay. So here's my table to organize our information. So our job now is to go from here and figure out an equation and then figure out um, what students got an A. So again, we have X here. We know 12 students got B. What is half of B? Six. Then we got one student who got a D, one student got an F, and 26 students took the test. 
So now we can make an equation by combining the things that we know. So we don't know x, so we can't do anything with that, so we're just going to put x because we don't know it. But do we know how many b's? 12. How many c's? 6. Well, 12 plus 6 is 18. How many b's? 1, so that's 19. How many s? That's 1, so that's 20. So now I have x plus 20 equals 26. And now, very easily, I can draw my tape right here, and I need two sections. One has an x, one has a 20. All of them together equal 26. So very easily, I know that 6 plus 20 gives me 26. So I have now figured out that six students got A's. Okay? Now, the thing that we need to remember is our lesson today is about taking a problem that is just like this and turning it into an inequality because there can be more than one answer. So if we go back to our notes over here, it says how many students pass the test? Okay, write an equation to show how many students pass. Well, then let's go back to our information and you all know that passing for us means that you have to have a C or higher. So our job is to figure out how to write um, students that pass the test. So we're going to take what we know. So we're taking x plus 12 plus 6 equals the students who pass. So out of 26 kids, we can now decide how many kids pass. But there's an easier way to do it. And the way to do it is to show using an inequality. If we are talking about x is representing the number of kids that pass, we could say that x is greater than how many kids who pass. Well, we know that 6 kids got an A, 12 kids got a B, 6 kids got a C. We know that, and that is what we consider passing. So we take 6 plus 6 is 12, 12 plus 12 is 24. So x for passing, because that's what we're talking about, what are the number of kids who pass? X has to be greater than or equal to 24 students. So that's how we turn it into an inequality because we know that 24 kids pass the test. So when we say greater than or equal to, it could be exactly 24 who did or it could be larger than that. No, could it be larger than that? No, it has to be less than that. Because if it was larger than that, then we could say that 27 passed and only 26 kids took it. So we would say it would be less than that. So as you can see, we can take a simple problem that we learned where we found some real absolute answers, one answer, and we can change it into more than one answer. 24 could have passed. Um, 22 could have passed. 20, um, 10 could have passed. 7 could have passed. So this is how you turn it into an inequality. Okay, so if we go back to our notes right over here, it says um, write an inequality to show how many students passed, and we did that. X is less than or equal to 24. Remember, an inequality is when we use less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. Okay, and we have a couple of pages that we're going to work on in our packet that practice with this. I don't want you to be too overly concerned about it because it will make more sense when you do the actual practice in class. Um, one other thing that I want to show you very quickly is um, in your packet, your practice, you're going to see a problem that looks like this. And you're going to have x um, plus 8 is greater than 4. And then they're going to give you the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and let's say 6. And your job is to decide which one of these values makes this a true statement. So if we plug in 0, 0 plus 8 is greater than 4. Is that true? So then for 0, you would write true. Okay, how about 1? 1 plus 8 is greater than 4. So you would write true. Okay, how about 2? 2 plus 8 is 10, which is greater than 4. So it would be true. So you see the pattern. That's what you're going to have to do in your practice tomorrow. What is a number of all of these, if you're looking at it, 6 plus 8 is 
um, 14, which is still greater than 4, so 6 would be true. So I am um, willing to bet that all of these are going to be true when you test them. So what would be a number that would make it untrue? And so one that would make it untrue is if you chose negative 1, right? Because if you have negative 1 plus 8, use your number line to help you. So here's negative 1, and we add 8 to it. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. What number is that? Well, this is 0. This is 1. This is 2. This is 3. This is 4. This is 5. This is 6. This is 7. So if we start here and add 8 to it, what number did we end up on? 7. So negative 1 would make it um, true. Oh, darn it, because negative 1 plus 8 is 7, and 7 is still greater than 4. So negative 1 wouldn't even work. So do you see how plugging in the different values can tell you whether the statement is true or false? That's what you're going to have to do in your test. Okay. So let's go back to our goal for today. Um, today we will see how to turn an equation into an inequality by changing the requirements of the solution. Our question, has there ever been a time in math when a scenario can have more than one answer? How could we represent it? And we represented it with an inequality. So that's all I have for you today, and I will see you all tomorrow. Bye!